Obama. Now we're joined now live by uh, the chief uh, investigative correspondent for ABC News, Brian Ross. And Brian, listen, it's nice to see you. I appreciate you stopping by for a few minutes. Glad to be here, Joe. And before we get into the issue at hand here, Brian, for those of that may not be aware, Brian is the guy. You're the guy who, uh, for ABC News, you, you crafted an amazing series of investigative reports on the uh, ability to smuggle nuclear potentially dirty bombs into the United States, and that was really compelling stuff. Well, we, we set out to see whether the uh, promises uh, of the Bush administration that they had cracked down on port security uh, were, uh, in fact, true. So we took a depleted uranium, uh, did it twice, first from Istanbul, a known al-Qaeda center, and were able to put it in one of those big shipping containers along with a bunch of other junk we bought there, loaded it up, shipped it right through the very best uh, detection equipment the U.S. had. And they first tried to deny it, then admitted it. We did it again a second time, this time from Jakarta, Indonesia, another Al-Qaeda location, and slipped it right through the port of Los Angeles. They, you know, as I say, there's nothing worse than an embarrassed bureaucrat, more dangerous than that. They were furious that they had twice been embarrassed and shown up. Uh, but we have since, I think, caused a uh, serious uh, recognition of this problem, and they're actually now trying to tackle it with something more than just PR spin. And I would imagine if you were scheduling to a third attempt at this, you wouldn't tell me anyway. We would not tell you, and <laughs> <laughs> I think twice is probably enough to prove the point. Because yeah, you guys took some grief. People were, were concerned that, that well, the ABC had crossed the line. Right. Well, we did not uh, break the law. And what we did was actually took a notes from a captured Al-Qaeda figure who was on trial in New York who had planned to do this. So we took his plan. So we weren't teaching Al-Qaeda anything, we were using yeah. what they intended to do to see if he had gotten that far, what could he have done. And the fact is, that material can come in. It's difficult to detect, yeah. uh, but we don't need lies about whether it can be detected. I mean, honesty is important. You know, Brian Ross from ABC News, and Brian, let's focus on the, the subject at hand here for the Democratic National Convention. Uh, one need only glance around to see that there's a lot of money here. Uh, oh, yeah, we've been on the money trail for uh, World News with Charles Gibson, and this is, uh, you know, the action you described behind us on the floor of the convention, that's one thing, but the real action is just uh, five, six blocks from here where all the lobbyists are spending tens of millions of dollars literally to wine and dine and seek to influence uh, Democratic members of Congress. They'll do the same thing next week in St. Paul with the Republicans. But here, it is lobbyists gone wild, as one uh, ethics uh, watchdog uh, representative told me. People here are spending incredible amounts of sums on the finest champagnes, liquors, caviar, shrimp. You know, it's not the hot dogs you see in the concourse where we are. It is the best of the best for the elite of the Democratic Party. But, Brian, aren't there, aren't there restrictions, rules, guidelines, Absolutely. laws, uh, Congress, laws? Yeah, well, Right. Congress passed a tough law last year. The Honest Leadership and Open Government Act of 2007, and now they've set about finding the loopholes to get around the laws they passed, and they have indeed found them. For instance, you can't have a sit-down dinner, but you can have a stand-up finger food dinner. So all the chefs here are figuring out how to make their fancy dishes so you can have them with a finger or on a toothpick. That gets around the law. Boy, just a tiny little uh, splitting of definitions and a little yeah. nuances and, and how it's being right. perceived. For instance, the law says you know, corporations are not allowed to entertain a member. So they say, oh, but we can do two members or three members. It doesn't say we can't do two or three. We just can't do a member. Then one has to wonder if these are intentional loopholes that are left behind there by the lawmakers or if these were unintended consequences and that the lobbyists are exploiting them. You know, that's, uh, that, that, that'll take Sigmund Freud to figure that out, but uh, you know, they certainly have, uh, in a way, crafted the language so it has allowed this kind of loophole to be exploited. Brian, we get to the point in your career when, uh, <laughs> when they see you coming, uh, they, they turn and they start heading for that other door? Well, they throw their uh, hands in front of the cameras. We, we, every single night I've been here, we get thrown out of the nicest places in town because uh, they don't want anybody to know what's going on behind the scenes. In my view, this is the real action at the convention is what uh, is going on behind the scenes where a money and power meet. Yeah, because the rest of this is it's a planned commercial. Right? Absolutely. It's completely orchestrated. You know, it's a, it's a four-day-long commercial. And I think it's important to pierce that and see what's really going on. That's what we've been doing for the world news. Chief Investigative uh, Correspondent for ABC News, Brian Ross. Brian, I appreciate you coming by. Great and we can, we can see more tonight on the news? Every night on World News with Charles Gibson. All right, you got it. Thank you, sir, so much. We do appreciate that. This is the KRMG.